new day. Last night I got that truss all welded on and painted. Now, since it's me, myself, and I, I'm gonna use my little creepy crawler thing and one little, I don't know what you call it, a little pallet roller. Get that sucker slid under the Jeep and bolt it up. I think I'm gonna check the U-bolt real quick before I slide it under there just to make sure everything works because I don't want to deal with that and draw holes bigger and yada yada if it's under the Jeep. It's a lot easier right here. But yeah, let's see how this goes. All right, well, heavy duty U-bolts fit. They're a little snug, so I'm gonna have to hug them in there to get the plate on. But nothing that the little persuasion hammer couldn't figure out. Yeah, definitely beefier than the old ones. So yeah, I think they're zinc coated or whatever, so they shouldn't rust. They'll stay looking all nice. Yeah. Time to roll this thing under. Okay, we got it partially rolled under. I'm just gonna line it up. Oh, this little center pin goes in that hole there. Just gonna need to twist it back, angle it so it's straight. A lot of moving back and forth when it's just just me. But, just take my time, I'll get it when I get it. That is a heavy sucker right there. I bet you that's all up 200 pounds. I mean, I could pick up and carry that Dana 35. This one, eh, not so much. I mean, I'm sure somebody that's a little bit stronger probably could, but yeah, not me. I'm not trying to blow out my back. No thanks. But yeah, I'll start getting this sucker bolted in. I'm. Really excited, it's gonna look pretty sweet. Well, this has been a lot funner than I thought it would be. It's fell on me a couple times, you know, rustling it by myself. I think I finally got it about right with my Jimmy rig in here. And then, I was hoping that this would just slide on there. But not a single bolt lines up, so. I have to get a little creative on there. I think when I bought the heavy duty ones, they didn't account for the added thickness of the um, diameter of the U-bolts. So they're actually narrower than they advertise online. So, sweet. Well, it's getting there. Definitely getting closer. Okay, that's it took some persuasion and some anger and a little bit of not nice words. Well, got the one side on. And I just gotta get the other side. I ended up having to squeeze them together with a big old set of pliers to get them to go. But they're on there. Okay, that was a struggle. I got the U-bolts and the shocks hooked up. Let's see here. Yeah, both sides. Yeah, it looks cool. So now I just gotta hook up my heat brakes, put the brake lines on, and then drive line, fill it up with some diff fluid. I left it out just to try to keep an extra pound or two off of it, but I don't think it made much of a difference. Yeah, no, not too bad. Took an hour or two. It would have been a lot easier if I had had some help, but it's in there. I don't plan on taking it out anytime soon. So if I do gears, I'm probably just going to leave it in there anyways. So. Yeehaw! Alright, got the brake lines ran. Definitely glad I didn't paint it blue because I already scratched a little piece on it. Yep, now it's just down to... Taking the torque wrench, torquing these U-bolts down to the old Google device says about 90 pounds. So I'll do that in a little cross form till it gives me the click. And then, yeah, and it's always good to 
come back and check the torques on all this kind of stuff after you do work on your rig especially if you go off-road so that's what I'll be doing Pounds of one arm. There it is. That's the click we're looking for. I'm just going to go back and check them because they will tighten down on it. I usually go around it twice, just to make sure. There we go. Cool. That side's all torqued down, ready to go. I just gotta do the other side. Bleed the brakes, add some fluid, drive line, tires, and this thing should be rolling down the road again. Okay, it's finally on its own weight again. There be. There's the new Dana 44 under the XJ. I think that looks pretty awesome. That was a pain. Definitely a pain. That was a lot heavier than that Dana 35. So I'm just gonna bleed the brakes, throw that drive line in, and she'll be rolling on out of the shop. Okay, I got the drive line all in. On to the next step. Well, I'm just using what I had in the shop, 8890. Not towing or anything, so it should be fine. So you just take out your the fill nut. I don't know exactly what size. I just tried the tire iron and it worked. So easy day. So I always with changing the diff fluids, I usually just pump them up till it starts dumping out and then you're good to go yeah so i'm gonna get to pumping so if you're getting like the bigger containers i picked up one of these little pumps a long time ago and i kind of 10 bucks it's either that or another way to do it find it there's one of those little bottles with that nozzle on and you just gotta squeeze 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 either way it's not the funnest but of course, I'm too cheap to buy the electric one, that electric transfer pump, but so do it the El Manuel way. All right, it is all in there. Bolted down, cranked down, brakes bled. Only thing I didn't do is hook up the e-brake. I wanted to go test it and see if it if it works. I know it's going to, but. I'm just excited. So, yeah. that was, should probably conclude my axle swap series there. Go ahead and like and subscribe. I'll be doing more here soon. I got um, some flex joints for these rough country arm kits because I blew one of them out the other day. And so I'm going to be replacing them with uh, curry joints so that'd be cool and they'll be rebuildable so yeah go ahead and give me a like subscribe if you like this stuff and i'll see you guys on the next one